Hey everybody, it's Kevin Kraft here down in Second Swings Columbia Tour Van. Uh, we've been talking a lot lately about wedges and we're going to sort of touch on some wedge stuff here in this one as, as well as the, the bag as a whole because I want to talk about gapping. So gapping is a really important component of any bag. Um, we're only allowed a certain number of clubs uh, in, a, in a set. So basically USGA regulations say we can have 14 clubs in the bag. Now about you, I could certainly use one extra, would be really awesome, uh, but alas, I am stuck. So 14 clubs it is. So we need to find out what do we need to cover all the distances that we're going to hit. So first off, if we're, if we're gapping a full bag, first thing we have to know is how far that driver goes, right? Driver's the one club in the bag that's designed to go as far as possible. Every other club in the bag is going to have a number associated with it. And with that comes playability, right? We need to know that the clubs beyond the driver are all going to be able to do what we need them to do. We need the ball to be able to stop. We need to be able to, to make sure that the ball can carry the distance that we need it to carry. So once we've got that driver figured out, we're gonna start working down through the bag and see what we need to cover it. So, you know, a high speed player, somebody that swings really, really fast, may carry one fairway wood. They may carry no fairway woods, okay? Just depends on the kinds of shots that they need to hit. They may need more wedges at the bottom of the bag to be able to cover it because they hit the ball so far. Uh, somebody with a slower swing speed. We get a lot of people that are just starting out. Most people that are just starting don't necessarily need 14 clubs in their bag. It can be confusing and you can have too many clubs that are, that are you know, stacked right on top of each other. We don't want that, okay? That's, that's carrying a club that is essentially useless. All it does is add weight to the bag, right? We wanna add weight to the bag, let's get golf balls. Make something that's useful. So, as we're going through a fitting, we have to make sure that we're getting the right playing conditions with every club that we use, as well as covering the yardages that we need, okay? So, uh, for me, I like to see a little wider gap at the top of the bag. So driver to fairway wood, fairway wood to the next club down, whether it's another fairway wood or whether it's a hybrid. And then when we start getting into the irons, that's when we start seeing those gaps getting a little bit tighter. We're typically gonna see around 10 yards of carry difference uh, from one iron to the next. Um, that can vary a little bit, uh, just depending on the speed of the player and the kinds of shots that they like to hit. Um, I used to work with Brian Moore when, uh, when I was working for a club company on the PGA Tour and Ryan was one of those guys who had standardized gaps. He had five degree gapping between each of his irons and that gave him the yardages that he wanted to play. Now Ryan likes to hit some shots harder and he likes to take something off shots. Uh, so it's a conversation that we have to have, you know, what do you like to do? Are you comfortable hitting smoother shots, uh, taking something off of it? Or are you like me who likes to stand there and basically hit it as hard as you can? Um, those things all go into creating the proper gaps in a, in a set. So when we start talking about wedge gapping, this is where it gets really, really important because these are our green light clubs. These are our attack the pin clubs. So. When I'm looking at a wedge set, I want to make sure that we've got all the all the distances that we need to have covered covered, and so we're going to get that baseline on the pitching wedge, which is typically everybody's weakest wedge, uh, and then see where that goes. So let's say I've got a customer that hits a, a pitching wedge 130 yards. Okay, the next club down gap wedge, I want to have fly probably about 115. And then I want to have a sand wedge go about 100. And then the lob wedge probably around 80 to 85 yards, something like that. But what I want to have happen is I want to have a hard lob wedge cover the same space at the top end as a smooth sand wedge, okay? I want to have two clubs have a little tiny bit of overlap so that there's two different ways we can play a yardage where those two clubs converge. What we don't want is this, where we've got too much uh, overlap of yardage in two clubs, and I don't want to have this one either. 
this is where the lofting on, on specifically on gap wedges gets interesting. 52 degrees used to be a pretty standard for a gap wedge. Nowadays, to me, it's almost a dead club for most players because the lofts have gotten so much stronger in a pitching wedge that you know you need that 50 degree wedge. Otherwise, we're going to create a gap between the pitching wedge and the gap wedge. So we want a little tiny bit of overlap. We certainly don't want to have no man's land where we don't have you know we don't have a club to, to cover it. Uh, for me, I've got one golf club that I really like to manipulate smooth shots, take something off, and that's my gap wedge. Uh, and I'm because I can only have 14 clubs in the bag. I've found the one place where I'm most comfortable, you know, hitting smoother shots. Uh, I like to be aggressive. I like to swing pretty hard. So that's my one one place where I manipulate things. So we're gonna have that conversation as we go through this. We got to make sure that we've got everything covered. Um, but you know, gapping is an important component, and a lot of that is actually done after the fitting after your new clubs have arrived because we're not going to necessarily know all of this until you've gotten out on the golf course. So work with a fitter. Talk your way through it. Let's make sure we've got everything covered. We've got 14 clubs in the bag. Let's make sure we've got 14 really good clubs with good separation covering all those yardages that we need, working with the right landing angles and the heights and the spin rates, all the things that we need to have the best set of golf clubs we can possibly have. And once you have those, do not hesitate to have them manipulated. Every club in my bag has been tweaked and tweaked to get exactly what I want out of it. If I've got one club going too far or another club not going far enough, I can make some adjustments there. Golf clubs are designed to be bent, some more than others, but they are designed to be tweaked so that we can get exactly what you need. So top to bottom, let's make sure you got great coverage. Come see us, we'll get you all taken care of. Thanks.